Good day for everyone. My name is Jose Alberto Luzardo. This is part number two of our presentation on robust control applied to a hard disk drive. In part number one, we introduced the robust control ideas for size of systems, single input, single output systems. Today, we continue explaining these ideas for the case of MIMO systems, that is, multiple input, multiple output systems. I think that a good understanding of the robust control concept is indispensable to use the software tools that make our lives easy at the time of designing the controller. In successive videos, we will deal with the following points. The theory of operation of hard disk drives, servo systems, robust control setup for a particular hard disk drive servo system, robust control design using MATLAB, Simulink, modeling the loop simulations, and conclusions. The first concept we need to deal with is the definition of matrix gain. Recall that in a size of system, the gain of the system is clearly defined by the magnitude of the transfer function and is independent of the input. However, for a transfer matrix, the gain depends on the direction of the input vector. Then we are interested in finding the directions of the input vector that maximizes the norm of the output. Here, the superscript edge denotes conjugate transpose. The solution of the above optimization problem is given by this expression. Notice that lambda i is an eigenvalue of the conjugate transpose of g times g, and u i is the eigenvector associated to lambda i. Now we can calculate the gain of g in the direction of u i. This calculation tells us that the gain in the direction of u i is the square root of the eigenvalue lambda i. The square root of the eigenvalue lambda i is known as the singular value i of g, also known as the principal gain i of g. Notice that the singular values are function of the frequency w. They are real because the conjugate transpose of g times g is symmetric, and we can order them as indicated here. Now, a very important result about the singular values is that the gain of g for any vector u is always sandwiched between the smallest and the largest singular values. The edge infinity norm is defined as the supremum of the largest singular value. Since we are already here on this topic, we couldn't leave the subject without mentioning the singular value of the composition. We can express any matrix as a product of three matrices. By is the orthogonal matrix of eigenvectors of G times its conjugate transpose. Big sigma is the diagonal matrix of singular values of G. Big U is the orthogonal matrix of eigenvectors of the conjugate transpose of G times G. This is what we mean by orthogonal matrices. Also notice that big sigma will have R non-zero singular values where R is the rank of G. Singular values can be used to determine the specifications of a multivariable control system. Remember the block diagram we considered in the first video. Ideally, we would like to reject the disturbances DO and DI, not to be too sensitive to the measurement noise N, not to be sensitive to the variations of the plant G, and to follow the reference R as close as possible, while keeping the control signal U as low as possible. But we found out in the case of analyzing size of systems that many of these requirements oppose each other and that it is impossible to satisfy all of them. But also, we realize that the different signals are more prominent in certain ranges of frequency than in others, and that 
Fortunately, these ranges were mutually exclusive. This will always allow us to design a SISO controller that accepts practical compromises. It's also good to remember the definition of sensitivity and complementary sensitivity in the case of MIMO systems, as they are essential in the formulation of a robust control problem. Understanding the meaning of the singular values, we can establish the following con control objectives. To make the system insensitive to the output disturbance and to the plant variations, we need to keep the largest singular value of the sensitivity as small as possible. To avoid noise propagation, we need to keep the largest singular value of the complementary sensitivity as small as possible. To follow the reference, we need to keep the largest and the smallest singular value of the complementary sensitivity close to one. To minimize control energy, we need to keep the, the, singular, the largest singular value of K as small as possible. To reduce the effects of the input disturbance, we need to keep the smallest singular value of k as big as possible. For 1 and 3, we can, we can achieve that by making the smaller singular value of jk very large. For 2, we need to make the largest singular value of jk very small. Phi can guarantee 1 and 3, and 4 opposes 5. With certain analogy with the size of system, we can, we can solve these conflicts by making the smallest singular value of jk very large and the smallest singular value of k very large too at low frequencies while we make the largest singular value of jk very small and the and the largest singular value of k very small too at high frequencies. In this figure, we illustrate the last observation. At low frequency, we establish a lower bound for the smallest singular value of gk, and at high frequency, we establish an upper bound for the largest singular value of gk. Notice that these conclusions with respect to the principal gain in the multivariable case are valid only if the closed loop system is stable. For, as in the size of case, there is a gain phase relationship that affects the stability and needs to be taken into account. Specifications on the singular values can be expressed as a normal specification through the use of weights. Here, we are requiring that the largest singular value of the sensitivity be smaller than 0.2 for low frequency, frequencies smaller than 1 radian per second in this case, and that the largest singular value of the complementary sensitivity be smaller than 0.1 for high frequency that is, in this case, larger than 50 radi radians per second. The first specification will make the system insensitive to output disturbances and variations of the plant at low frequencies. And the second specification tries to make the system insensitive to high frequency measurement noise. By using these two transfer functions as weights, we can achieve what is required. Notice that the range of, of frequencies between 1 radian per second and 50 radian per second is open and flexible to the designer. The weights will predetermine the behavior in this range. We know also that the weights must be selected in such a way that the transition in the mid frequency range, that is between 1 radian per second and 15 radian per second, is feasible. Recall that there is a mathematical dependence between the complementary sensitivity T and the sensitivity S that needs to be satisfied, otherwise the selection of the weights will not provide a feasible solution. Then the performance can be specified by the following norms. 
This example is to illustrate the procedure we will follow for the design of edge infinity multivariable controllers. The weights are a design parameter. The other aspect in the design is the inclusion of the plant uncertainties, which we discuss next. Notice that we don't work with the open loop transfer function as we do in the case of SISO systems. To describe the uncertainty of the plant, we have different ways. First, we have what is called on a structure uncertainty. We can distinguish here the additive perturbation and the multiplicative perturbation at the input and the multiplicative perturbation at the output. GO is the nominal plant, the one that is known perfectly. Delta is the perturbation which is not known perfectly. Typically, delta is a stable transfer matrix and its bounds are known. Let's consider a controller K applied to a plant with additive perturbation, even though the following analysis can be extended to the other kinds of perturbations without major complications. The block diagram on the top represents this case. The one on the bottom has been rearranged in a way that is very typical of robust control analysis. Notice that we have taken the perturbation out of the block we call Q, which represents the nominal plant and its controller. We have indicated the input variables V and Z and the output variables Y and U of Q. Also notice the inclusion of two weights within Q. These ways have the purpose to set a new disturbance delta A, whose edge infinity norm is less than 1 as indicated. We can simplify our previous block diagram as shown here. Using block algebra, we can calculate the components of the matrix Q. They are indicated in the slide. By extending the small gain theorem, a sufficient and necessary condition to guarantee the stability of the system considering the perturbation delta is making the edge infinity norm of Q22 less than 1. In this case, the controller K is robust against the allowed variations of the plant. Now we have the case of a structural uncertainty. In this case, the matrix delta has a diagonal structure as indicated. Each diagonal element of delta can be a stable transfer matrix or a scalar. And by using a scaling and weights, we can make each element of delta have an edge infinity norm less or equal than 1. For the case of a structural uncertainty, we have a little problem. If we design a controller K to satisfy, as established before, the edge infinity norm of Q22 be less than 1, we will get a very conservative, maybe unpractical controller. This is because the condition edge infinity norm of Q22 less than 1 is a sufficient but not a necessary condition for a stability for plants with a structural uncertainty. This is because most perturbations that satisfy such condition are not permissible. Only the diagonal ones are permissible. To deal with the structure uncertainty, the structure singular value was created. In this exp expression at the top of the slide, we can see the definition of the structure singular value. This definition is intimidating and seems complex, and probably it is. Let's see how we can understand it. The singular value is zero if, his, if this determinant is zero. First, why is this determinant important? It is important because it summarizes the generalized Nyquist criterion in the multivariable case. The system is stable if this determinant is never zero for any frequency W. Remember that delta and Q22 are functions of the frequency. And if we try all the deltas that belong to the set of permissible deltas, and for none of them there is a frequency that makes this determinant zero, then the structure singular value is zero. 
This will be the perfect deal because we, we will have achieved the robust stability for all allowed perturbations. Now, assume that some deltas in the set of permissible deltas make this determinant zero. Among all these deltas, we are going to pick the smallest one. The, sm the measure of a small is given by the largest singular value. In other words, we pick the delta with the minimum largest singular value that makes the determinant zero. That is, that makes the system unstable. The structure singular value is then the inverse of this minimum. Let's summarize all of this because it seems a, a little bit complex, um, complicated. If, if somebody asks you how mu is defined, you can answer with fewer words as follows. Find the smallest structure delta among all the permissible deltas, which makes the determinant equal zero. Then the structure singular value is the inverse of the largest singular value for that delta. If no such delta exists, then the structure singular value equals zero. Notice that mu depends not only on q22 but also on delta. A large, a large mu is bad because it means that a small perturbation destabilizes the system. A small value is good for the opposite reason. The best value is zero. Now, we can use this concept to establish a necessary and sufficient condition for robust stability in the case of a structure uncertainty. At the bottom of the slide, we can see the use of the supremum of mu to determine the robust stability. Recall that mu as the inverse of a singular value is a function of frequency. Robust stability then is achieved if the supremum of the structure singular value of q to 2 is less than 1. By performance in this slide, we require that the output y must follow the reference v, according to certain specifications and for all permissible deltas. There are then two major requirements that we can see here written as two edge infinity norm conditions. However, we can always consider the performance specification as a new perturbation between y and v, as indicated in the block diagram at the bottom. This new perturbation can be included in a new expanded delta, which allows us to solve simultaneously the performance and the robustness stability with only one condition. The supremum of the structural singular value of Q must be less than 1. Solution of the robust control problem. In this video, we have presented the robust control problem in the context of MIMO systems. Through the selection of weights and uncertainty representations, we can formulate our robust control problem either as, as an edge infinity or mu synthesis problem. Setting the problem is the first major duty of the control design. I would say this is perhaps the most challenging step in the design of a robust control problem. Fortunately, the robust control theory have allowed the development of proven algorithms to tackle these problems, and there exist well-established computational tools that solve them. The use of these tools along with the interpretation of the results is the second major duty of the control engineer. Next, we will study the theory of operation of hard disk drives and set up a control robust problem for a particular hard disk drive. We will solve this by using MATLAB. Thank you for watching this video. Remember to subscribe to my channel if you appreciate this kind of videos. Um, visit also my website whose link is below in the description of this video and if you need an embedded control engineer contact me through my website because I may be the one you are looking for.